Hi everybody, my name's John Bailey from Deeper and you're joining me midway through a session at Nash Church Lakes. This is where I'm gonna show you how I use the Deeper Chirp to my advantage in a situation like this and give you a few tips and techniques to help you along the way. Now, I actually got here yesterday and I promised Joe a 40 pounder for the Carpology cameras and last night I did exactly that. So here's some lovely footage of that fish and then afterwards I'll show you exactly what I did to catch it. Well, here we go then. Joe's not due down here until tomorrow. Um, I arrived here at church. Today, uh, one of the lads here has already caught a fish, a lovely, lovely 37 pounder. And I was telling Joe it'd be nice to get him a 40 pounder for the Carpology cameras for this video. And by some miracle, I've managed to do it. Uh, it's a fish called Houdini. It's one of the A-team in the lake. It's one I've wanted since I started fishing here and I'm very grateful for having it in, to have it in my retainer right now. So I'm gonna lift him up in a second. It's a little bit lively, as you can imagine. Um, but yeah, it was found on a spot using the deeper with a bait boat mount, dropped in some worms and um, the rest is history. So there we go. 41 pounds, four ounces of Church Lake Mirror, fish called Houdini. Definitely one of the most wanted and mega, mega incredible carp. And one I'm extremely happy to have in my net. <laughs> so what we're gonna do now, before he beats me up anymore, gonna get some quick stills and then get back to current day with Joe. So I'm clearly made up with that capture, an incredible fish, and as I said in the video, one that I've wanted for a really long time, so absolutely over the moon with it. Now, it didn't just happen, a lot of work went into catching that fish, and the important part was finding the spot that I caught the fish from. Now, when you come to a new lake or a lake you visited a couple of times, you want to know what you're fishing over, obviously. You don't want to be fishing in the weed, you want to be fishing on the spots that you're comfortable with. You might want to know the depth for zig fishing or whatever it is about the spots that you're fishing, you need to find out. And the easiest and quickest way with, to do it is with a deeper. This is a Chirp 2 set up on a normal spod rod, spod reel, exactly the same setup that I'd use for using a marker flow, a lead or a spod indeed, and a piece of equipment that I'm sure most carp anglers have. Now, obviously you can get away with using a deeper on a normal carp rod if you're fishing shorter distances, but to having a dedicated setup that you use for doing your spod work and your deeper work as well, I find is quite important. So this right here is just a standard spod rod and a spod reel loaded with 20 pound braid. And then it's got a 30 pound shock leader on it too, which takes the impact of the heavier weight when you're casting it. Then on top, I've obviously got the deeper foam mount there, which stays on there the whole time. It, does, it might wobble a little bit, but it doesn't go anywhere during the cast, trust me, it stays exactly where it is. And this setup is more than capable of casting a four and a half, five ounce deeper chirp out to any distance that you need it to. Same sort of weight as a spot if you're putting bait out. So this right here is the easiest way to find your spots. A couple of casts and you can see the clear areas, you can see the weed, you can see the depths, even the water temperature if you want to. And to me, it's a lot less intrusive than putting a lead out there 10 or 15 times and a marker float as well to find out the same information you can do in a couple of casts. Where I'm fishing here at Nash's Church Lake, um, I'm stuck to this swim so I can't go anywhere. So the last thing I really want to do is push the fish out and scare them away by thrashing the water to death with a leading rod and a marker float. A couple of casts with this, I know where I'm fishing, I know what I want to be over, and I can get the rigs out effectively. So after I've done that, that will be the last time I'll be casting a rod into the water. I'm gonna go with some much more stealthy approaches, still using the deeper to help me though, which we're gonna get on to next. So on this session, I'm using two super stealthy techniques to get my bait and rigs out to the spots that I previously found with the deeper chirp. The first one of those is a good old bait boat. Now, as I said before, I can cast these distances easily. It's not about that. It's about being discreet, being quiet and getting all of your bait on one spot in one go with as little intrusion into the carp's habitat as possible. 
So this method here is exactly how I caught that lovely 40 pounder from yesterday. It's a bait boat, there's nothing special about that, but the important bit is at the back here. So we've got my deeper chirp to mounted on the deeper bait boat mount, which is basically a 3M Velcro pad onto the back of the boat. It can extend for different size bait boats as well. And then I've got the supplied deeper lanyard there, which I wrap around the handle and fix onto the tethering point on the top of the deeper. That's only there as a just in case, obviously you don't want to leave your expensive sonar out in the water. If I go past an overhanging branch and it knocks it or an angry swan comes over and takes it out on your boat, at least you've still got that there to bring it back. So the deeper bait boat mount arm here is quite simple in the principle of what it does, but the design's quite clever. You've got a couple of hinges, one at the top of the bait boat there, one here on the base. The base is a hard plastic ring in effect. Uh, it's hollow in the bottom, so we still send the signals through, not a problem, but that's buoyant enough to keep that deeper afloat on the top of the waves in the roughest of conditions, and it'll keep it in the perfect place to send you back a good signal to your phone. Moving on to the phone mount just quickly. This is the deeper phone holder. Obviously before you saw it mounted to my spot rod so it's easier to use and read whilst you're trying to get the readings off. Um, same in this case really, you can mount it to anything. I've got it on a little old tripod here. Um, you can mount it to anything, position it in any way you want to so you can get it out of the glare of the sun if you like. You can also mount it on um, an actual boat if you're fishing from a boat, even if you're lure fishing for instance. Really handy bit of kit and does the job really well. So here we go then, getting the boat out to the spot that I found when I was casting the deeper out there. I've now got it on the back of the boat so I can just confirm where I'm going to be dropping my rig. Nice and quick, nice and quiet, no messing around. Not casting in loads of times and getting it wrong and then spotting a load of bait over the top of it. Everything's right there with it. Um, it's just a matter of getting it to the same zone using the horizon markers that you can see and then confirming the bottom on the phone. So as we're getting close to the spot, you can see what's going on out there. I can see what's going on in the monitor. The bottom's clearing up nicely. Just gonna hold back. And there's a spot just past that little bit of weed. And then we drop. And you can even see on the phone, the bait dropping out of the bait boat. It's as simple as that. Nice and easy, nice and quick. Very little noise, especially when you're fishing somewhere where the fish are used to the sound of bait boats as well. In the space of two minutes, we've done half an hour's work with rods casting. So my second super stealthy approach of delivering my rigs and bait, it's probably no surprise, it's the bushwhacker baiting pole. It doesn't need any introduction. It's an absolute animal when it comes to fishing well and fishing quietly, short distances, even some long distances in some cases. Um, it's fantastic at delivering a trap exactly where you want it very, very precisely. As you just seen in Deeper's last video with Carpology where Martin took you to a park lake and did very, very well with his Bushwhacker baiting pole. Same sort of situation. This is the Bushwhacker Pro, so this is the newer version. This one actually comes with a deeper mount arm on the front of it that you can take off as well. Martin had a very handy little device that you found, an aftermarket product that clamp around the, uh, the pole of the Bushwhacker to strap his deeper on. Same sort of idea, does exactly the same job. This one just comes ready mounted with the arm on the front. Obviously the other benefit of having the deeper mounted to the front of the Bushwhacker baiting pole is that there's no interference back here for your line to get trapped on when you're turning your rig over or when you're shipping it out. Your deeper's mounted up front and out of the way. So just like before with the bait boat, nice and quiet. Zero disturbance at all out there to where we're fishing and anywhere in between us as well. I've got the phone mounted next to me so I can see exactly where I'm going. I know the distance. I've just got to check the bottom that I'm going to drop the bait over when we get there. Nice and quiet. And that is the key to using the deeper. It's all about disturbance control. You're minimalizing any disturbance you do out there where you're fishing, using a deeper over anything else, any other ordinary tactics that you may use. 
And on a water like this, that's a massive edge. When you can't move, you've got other anglers around you making noise, if you can be nice and quiet, it will definitely help you put more fish on the bank. So I'm just going to get it in position now. As I can see there on the phone, it's absolutely crystal clear out there. Lovely hard bottom. I'm going to turn the zipper on the baiting pole. Bit of a shake. That's it. It's as simple as that. Rigs out there, fishing. I know the spot's absolutely perfect. I know it's presented because I've dropped it with a bait with a baiting pole. And now I can ship it back in nice and quiet, set the alarm up, and wait for a big fat carp to come and have a tasty treat. So now all the rods are out, I thought I'd explain very quickly to you why I use a couple of different methods in my fishing to get the rigs out there on the pond. Um, it's quite simple really, the longer range, now it's not long range by any stretch, but the longer range rods over there, still only nine or 10 wraps and still not a long distance. I prefer to put out with the bait boat because I feel like I have more control at that range with the bait boat than I do with the bush bushwhacker. Other people may be different, but for me personally, I have more control over that at that range than I do with this. So I can stick the deeper onto the deeper bait boat mount, send it out, I can be in full control over the spot and drop it knowing that I'm fishing 100% and I'm confident in what I'm doing. And then likewise on the shorter spots. On the shorter spots, I feel that a bait boat is a bit more twitchy, um, and when I'm only fishing sort of nine, 10 sections with the bushwhacker, I can control this very, very precisely with the deeper on. I can hover it over a spot the size of a bin lid, pardon the expression, but I can, I can hold it over a spot that big and drop it on a very small area, knowing that it's fishing 100% and I'm again, 100% confident with it. That's the only reason. If you're confident with using a bait boat at super short range as well, then that's fine. If you're really confident with a, bait, with a baiting pole at really long distances, then again, that's fine. You can just get away with using one of these two. It's just me and my fishing and what I'm confident in. These are tactics that I use everywhere I fish. Firstly, finding the spot with a spod rod and then delivering the bait and the rig with either the bait boat or the baiting pole to make sure I'm fishing accurately and on the spots that I want to be. All that's left now is to cross all the fingers and hope we get one more fish before Joe goes home. And if not, hopefully I can winkle one more out before I go home towards the end of the week.